Well, this is Roxy Rose again. I hope you were able to uh, run off and uh, take a little bathroom break. Uh, maybe make yourself a sandwich. And uh, I hope I didn't put you to sleep on the first section. Um, but this is uh, section two of a multiple part series of my uh, transitioning and particularly uh, transitioning late in life. Um, and the first uh, section, as I uh, covered a bit, was about feeling uh, transgendered uh, from a very young age. Um, and uh, those feelings really never go away. They, they just never go away. Um, as much as you want to pray to God, and we were raised very religiously, uh, they just never, never, ever go away. Um, and, and all transgender people know this. But uh, people that are uninformed uh, just seem to think that there's uh, some way to just kind of put it out of your mind. But no, not a chance. Um, so we all, um, all of us transgender people who uh, have any inkling of God or religion, we always uh, pray or meditate and uh, the feelings don't go away. Um, but anyway, so um, as I was talking about uh, in the previous uh, segment, I was born the middle child of uh, five children, and uh, I considered myself the neglected middle child, and I really fit the bill to the T, you know. Um, in fact, one of my dad's favorite stories, when he talks about all his children, uh, you know, he, he talks about... Uh, each one has their own little stories uh, to be told about what they did when they were kids. Well, when it comes to me, my dad's favorite story to tell is, oh, Roxy, of course my name wasn't Roxy at the time. Roxy used to get into church, and we went to church three times a week. Roxy would always show up at church without her shoes and socks on. It never failed. Roxy always showed up in church without her shoes and socks on. And, um, well, I had a younger brother and a younger sister that managed to make it into church completely dressed properly. Uh, and I had two older brothers um, that seemed to make it into church with, um, you know, fully clothed. Uh, but me, as for me, I uh, showed up without shoes and socks. Well, I distinctly remember um, every uh, time we went to church, my dad would come in. Uh, we were always late. Uh, and he would rush into our room. I shared a room with my younger brother. And my dad would, you know, get my brother all straightened out, put his tie on, get his shoes and socks on. And then my dad would whisk out of there yelling to for everybody to get in the car. And um, so um, his favorite story about me showing up into church all the time without shoes and socks meant that I um, got out of the house without shoes and socks or anybody noticing. I got in the car without shoes and socks or anybody noticing. I got out of the car when we arrived at church without shoes and socks or anybody noticing. And only until we got into church did they notice that Roxy didn't have shoes and socks. So, um, so what does that say? You have the neglected middle child? Yeah, I think so. And um, another funny story is, um, you know, let's say for af after church, um, we would all be there, uh, and um, somebody would come up and introduce themselves or say hello to my parents. And uh, we, the, my parents would introduce all of us children. Well, my oldest brother, uh, who's a really great guy, a really big guy, he was always really big, and he was named after my father, who was named after his father, etc. Uh, they would always introduce him as their number one son. Uh, and he kind of deserved that uh, uh, that position because he was he's a great guy he's a number one son, uh, but anyways, uh, and he's a number number one brother too, um, but so they would introduce him as uh, the number one son, and then they'd come down the row and next would be my uh, next to the line uh, or next to the oldest brother. And they would introduce him as the lawyer in the family. Well, he had this mouth that was just always talking back to adults. He would never shut up. So they uh, thought he was going to be a lawyer. Well, um, I'll skip over myself and come back to that. But then when they came to my younger brother, you know, they had a pet name for him. He was the baby boy in the family, and they called him Eddie Zaco. And, uh, you know, they would, they would suggest, because he was kind of smart, but... Um, 
well, it d kind of depends on how you look at it, but they would uh, suggest that he's going to be doctor. He's going to be the doctor in the family. And then, of course, my sister, you know, she was younger than all of us, a, a lot younger. And, um, you know, she was the girl. She was just the princess. And uh, But when they came to me, being the middle child, there was no nickname or funny story or title. I was the redhead. Everybody was brunette in my family, but I was a redhead. And... Um, and uh, my uh, my uh, mom would just refer to me as Roxy the Red. Uh, of course, like I said, my name wasn't Roxy back then. Uh, but um, then the 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 people um, looking at me would say, "Oh my gosh, where'd you get your red hair?" And my mom, she was always flirty and witty. She would say, um, "From the milkman." And she she was funny that way. But uh, yeah. She she would say um, that I got my red hair from the milkman, um, and uh, after a while I kind of caught on. Um, still very young, uh, but when we were introduced like that, and then the people would say, "Oh my goodness, where'd you get your beautiful red hair?" and I'd say, "From the milkman," and I really thought that I got it from the milkman. I mean, why wouldn't I? I didn't understand the joke, but my mom, when she heard that, when I said I got it from the milkman, she she got all uptight and really mad. And then she pulled me aside and said, don't ever say that again. And I couldn't figure it out. Why the double standards? You know, she said it. It was fun, flirty, witty. And I say it and I get in trouble. <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, so, you know, again, it was like, yeah, I was the middle child, the typical neglected middle child. Um, and as I, as I grew up, um, you know, being transgender, uh, in school, socializing is just, just downright painful. Uh, because, you know, if you're not familiar with uh, transgenderism, you have all these thoughts in your head all the time, constant. You know, and uh, in my case, um, you might even be wearing uh, women's undergarments, uh, you know, because, you know, you steal them from your siblings or your parents or something like that. And, uh, you know, you do these things and you are always condemning yourself within yourself. And when you're trying to hold a conversation with another person, you're constantly thinking, well, uh, if they only knew about me, they wouldn't like me. And if they only knew what I was wearing, uh, you know, they'd hate me. And so socializing, being face-to-face -face with another person and trying to conversate becomes impossible. And the, and the best um, way I could um, compare it to is uh, something like, you know, trying to drive a car in, in, in terrible traffic. At the same time, you have this back seat full of people yelling at you, um, trying to tell you directions. Uh, and and it's very distracting, and you can't you can't drive safely. And the same goes with a transgender person and trying to conversate normally with another person. There's all these things bouncing around in your head that uh, that are somewhat self-destructive and um, and prevent you from ever being close. Because after all, the person that they see is not who you feel that you are. So. Um, so you you naturally think that even if they show you a genuine affection, you naturally uh, excuse it and suggest to yourself that, you know, um, they don't like me, they like that other person, and they wouldn't like the real me. So that makes socialization in school and, and elsewhere, for that matter, very, very difficult for a transgender person. So I, I never went to school. I mean, I did. They, they, they forced me to go to school, but whenever I could, I just cut classes, even from a very young age. Um, and uh, my parents really just didn't know how to keep me in school, aside from, you know, going to school and attending class with me. But when the school bus would pull up in front of the school, you know, my brothers would walk into school and I would walk the other way and spend my time just walking around uh, Palm Springs all alone. It was much preferable than uh, going to school, a lot less painful. And, you know, then when 2.30 rolled around and it was time to go home, I would just walk back to school, get on the bus and go home. And um, there was one semester when I uh, cut a whole semester. 
And I got in trouble, though, when it came to parent-teacher conference. For some reason, there was a mix-up in uh, uh, enrollment, or they thought there was a mixture, a mix-up in enrollment. And just because I never attended class, they thought that, well, I must not have been enrolled. And uh, never they never said anything. And uh, my parents went to parent-teacher conference, or at least my mom did. And they said, well, we never seen Roxy all year long. So I got into a little trouble there, but and that's about when they decided to take me out of school. Um, so I'm going to end there with another section, and uh, we'll pick up uh, uh, where I left off um, being taken out of school because, uh, you know, difficult in uh, socializing and the problems in school. So that's um, section two uh, of transitioning and particularly transitioning late. This has been Roxy Rose. And um, I'll, I will uh, be back and we'll talk again. Bye-bye.